In this video, I'm going to teach you how to break a radical down into what's called simplest radical form. The procedure to do this is written off to the left. The first thing that you want to do is ask yourself if the number under the radical is a perfect square. The number 20 is not a perfect square. If you were to try to take its square root on the calculator, you would not get a whole number answer. So then we go to step two. Create an organized list of all factor pairs. So I'm going to think about the number 20 and think about all those things that multiply to 20. And I'm going to do this in an organized way, starting with the number 1. 1 times 20, 2 times 10, and 4 times 5. The next step is to identify any numbers on the list that are perfect squares. They are 1 and 4. The next step is to identify which pair is the winning pair. And if we look at step number four in the procedure, it says that the winning pair will be the one that includes the largest perfect square. So the winning pair in this case is going to be four times five. In step five it says, write the winning pair under a radical with the perfect square written first. And in step six it says, take the appropriate square root. So I've got the square root of 4 times 5, which is the same thing as the square root of 20, but the square root of 4 is a perfect square, so I can write it as 2 square root 5. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 5 can't be broken down. So our final answer is 2 root 5. In our second example, we're going to break down the radical square root 32. Again, going through the procedure list, number one, check to see if the value is a perfect square. 32 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to try to break it down. Step two, create an organized list of all factor pairs. So I'm going to think to myself, what are all the different numbers that multiply to 32? 1 and 32, 2 and 16, 4 and 8, and that's it. Step two, identify any perfect squares on the list. Well, on this list, there are three perfect squares. One, 16, and four. In step four, you're to identify the winning pair, which is the one that includes the largest perfect square. In this case, that's gonna be two times 16, because 16 is the largest. When I rewrite the radical, I like to put the perfect square first, so I'm going to say 16 times 2. The square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 2 can't be broken down, so I leave that as root 2. So the final answer is 4 root 2. In example 3, the problem is a little bit more difficult because the radical square root 75 is being multiplied by the number 5. So I'm going to show you how to deal with something like that. Uh, first, let's look at that number 5 that's written out in front. I'd just like you to think about it and think about it, just ignoring it for right now. We'll put it back at the end. So right now, just sort of cast it aside. Uh, our next step would be to consider the number 75 and ask ourselves, is that a perfect square? And the answer is no, so we're going to have to go through the procedure that we've gone through in the last two examples. And that is to come up with an organized list of numbers that multiply to 75. They are 1 and 75, 3 and 25, 5 and 15, and that's it. The next part of the procedure has us identify any perfect squares. They are 1 and 25. The winning pair is going to be the pair that contains the largest perfect square. 25 is the largest perfect square, so this is the winning pair. Again, I like to write the perfect square first, so instead of writing 3 times 25, I'm going to write 25 times 3. Now, let's not forget that there was a 5 in front, and we need to deal with that now. So let's bring that down over here, and just like it was in front in the beginning, we'll put it in front again here. So. In summary, we have a 5, we have the square root of 25, which is 5, and then we've got the square root of 3, which can't be broken down further. We multiply the results, and we get 25 root 3. And that's the final answer, 25 root 3.
For our last example, we're going to be finding the product of negative 6 and the square root of 45. So like example 3, we're going to start by taking that negative 6, which, which is just a number out in front, and just casting it off the side. Now the number 45 is not a perfect square, so I'm going to make my organized list starting with 1, 1 and 45. Now if you're having trouble making this list, you can use your calculator of course and just try 1, try 2, try different numbers that would divide the number under the radical. So 2 is not going to work, 3 and 15 works, 5 and 9, and that's it. Sometimes the list is short, other times there can be many possibilities. This one only has three pairs, so it's not that bad. The next part of the process is to identify perfect squares. They are 1 and 9. The largest perfect square is 9, so this is going to be our winner, 5 times 9. When I write these winners underneath the radical, I like to put the perfect square first. So instead of 5 times 9, I'm going to put 9 times 5. Let's not forget about the negative 6 that was out in front, so I'm going to bring that down here. And now we'll put it all together. We have a negative 6. We have the square root of 9, which is 3. And we have the square root of 5, which can't be broken down any further. Putting this together, we have negative 18 root 5. 